Miari kena usakasakabo, hola y buenos dia, hello and good day. It's Elba again, aka Phoenix Taino, playing some more wakfu. Okay, so movements are performed by left clicking. Target any accessible point on the map and your character will move there. You can click and hold to keep moving forward. So this is one click. And everywhere you click, there will be like a little square to kind of let you see where you're going. Or you can just hold the button and move the mouse forward. Some game elements can be interacted with. The cursor will change shape when they are. Most interactions are done via a right click. You can then left click to select the specific interaction you want. Sometimes your character will independently move to the interactive element to perform the interaction. So basically what this is saying is like, I'm all the way over here, right? But if I right click on this wodent, and hit start a fight, my character's automatically gonna run towards and set up the the board, basically, right? The fighting area, whatever, combat zone. To get around in combat, simply click on the desired cell. Each cell navigated this way costs one movement point. Therefore, the targeted cell must be within the range set by your remaining movement points. Movement points are reset to their maximum value at the end of each turn. So, three movement points, three squares that will light up. So, I have three movement points. It's going to let me move in any direction within the combat zone a maximum of three spaces. It wants me to go here, though, so I'm going to go here. Fights are turn-based. You can only perform actions on your turn. Click on the end turn button to end your turn. So because this is timed, if you end your turn early, it gives you extra on the next turn, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this is just wanting you to press the end turn button here. You can also use the space, the space bar, to end your turn. To attack the Wodent, select the fist in the bar at the bottom right, then target the Wodent. The Wodent must be in the actions area of effect, or the blue area, which is the, uh, the squares that are in the area of effect will be blue, 
So you'll have to get close to the rodent first. You need action points to perform actions in combat. AP are reset to their maximum value at the end of each turn. A spell's AP or action points. Um, the AP cost is shown in the spell description. So when you hover over the spell in the bar, a window will pop up and it'll tell you right here because it's got the star next to it and so do the action points on the in the middle of the bar you know that this is going to cost three action points so doing a little bit of math we know we can do this twice you can also if you uh see or can look down towards the bottom right otherwise i'm going to tell you what it says shortcuts unknown eventually that's going to say shortcuts one and you'll be able to like press the number one and select this fist instead of um having to like click on the target and then click on this so for now we click on this and next to the mouse we see what's been selected this blue area of effect is where i can where I need my target to be to actually hit it. So I need to get closer. I use two movement points, leaving one left down here. And then when I click on the fist in the spell bar, it lets me punch this one in. So because it costs three, I have three action points left. And I can, in fact, punch him a second time. Normally, you could let the timer run out. Because you only get, like, I want to say 40, 40, 30, 40 seconds each turn when you're in not in tutorial combat. But um, for the sake of time, because there's 430-something seconds left... I'm going to end my turn. So there's a red arrow pointing to the fist to indicate, hey, this is what you need to do. The blue arrow points to your character. If you're not sure where on the board your character is, you could always go to the right and hover your mouse over your character. And it'll put an arrow back above your character's head. Right? We can't see the difference because we're in a tutorial, but this on the right also indicates your turn. So it shows that my turn is, it's currently my turn. And after me, it's the bonus turn. You can also hover to see the movement points, action points, walkthrough points, and all that stuff each character has on their turn. Or you can hover over the character and right click and a window will pop up letting you know all of its like stats and stuff like that. You can see it for enemies, for yourself, and for any allies that are on the board. But moving right along, we're gonna punch this mode and get this tutorial over with. At least this part. Tutorial one, finish the fight against the Woden. So in this tutorial, the Woden drops the key that you automatically pick up. It wants you to go to where the arrow is pointing. The path is blocked. That Woden is smarter than it looks. I've got the portal key, but it's broken. With the right materials, I should be able to fix it. To make a tree grow, use its cutting. On an area of fertile ground, select the cutting and then plant it in the specified location. So the game is going to automatically give you the cutting where the red arrow is pointing. So you would just click on it and it's going to show like a little image of what you clicked on, which is a cutting of that tree. 
And when you put it where the blue arrow is pointing in the dirt, there's a green square indicating that you can in fact plant the cutting here. And that's what I'm gonna do. I have to wait for, I have to wait a bit for this tree to grow. So trees like plants and crops take time to grow. Once the tree has grown, cut it to get the wood. And we'll know that it's fully grown and ready to cut down whenever we hover over it and it gives us the option. See, it went from just being a regular mouse to now telling me that I can right click and cut down the wood. Now that you've collected the ingredients, you can use the workshop to fix the broken key. So we're gonna, again, right click because that's what the mouse is indicating where the blue arrow is. And when we hover over that, it's gonna say workshop. So we know this is the right place. We have the portal key. So we're gonna click here and it shows that we have one wafu wood, one broken key, both check marks. And all we would have to do is press this button to craft. When it's finished, and we are now able to open the portal. So for the record, you can hit Q and it would normally show your quest, but because we're still in a tutorial, it's not gonna let us. But yeah, you'd be able to see your quest and see what you've gotten done. For example, if I go to finish here, Hmm. Tutorial four. Or maybe it's just the fourth step of the one tutorial. I don't know, but we're going to go through the portal. Go here. And it wants us to pick a fight with this warden again. Each fighter has health points. When their health points drop to zero, the fighter dies or is KO'd. When all fighters are KO'd or dead, the fight is over. Big old heart. That's our health meter or health bar. And right now I have 60 health points. I got two, three, Spells, and I gotta go here. So this spell, from where I'm at, lets me anywhere in this blue range attack. And I can even do three cells. So if there were three, one character here, one character one here, and one character here, I would hit them all. This spell lets me hit anything from anywhere. And this spell requires for me, has a pretty good range. So anywhere in these lit up areas, I would be able to hit the Wobu. To cast the spell, simply left click it in your spell bar to select it. A description of its effects will appear when you hover over it or right click on it. The cells reachable by the spell are indicated when you select the spell. They depend on the the spell's range. Left clicking on the desired target will cast the spell. Spells have various parameters, an AP, action point cost, a potential WP or wakfu point cost, a minimum range, and a maximum range. All of these parameters must be valid for this spell to be cast. So basically like all the shit I just said already. We're going to right click on the wodent and it shows that it's no, there's no particular element that it's weaker to. It's pretty even throughout, so it doesn't really matter what we attack it with. I'm just going to go ahead and do that one. Three damage, four damage, five damage. So I should have done this one. Right. 
And another thing that this is probably going to tell us about is uh, with regard to positioning. You want to be either next to or behind your target. I mean, you can hit it from any direction, but if you hit it from the side, it does more damage. And if you hit it from behind, it does even more damage than that. So I'm going to skip my turn to save us time and move on to the next step. I'm going to take my own advice here. And we're going to hit him with some water. Oh, I have one more move. Let's hit him with this then. Ta-da! There you are, Alchemist. <laughs> Rogalora Gran, what are you doing here? Did you feel that supernatural wave of Wakfu too? Yes, that Wakfu is concerning. Rogalora Gran senses the energy getting closer and closer. <laughs> Ouch! Whoa, whoa, whoa! An incarnate! My head! Oh... Don't move. I'll heal you. Is that better? Yep. Thanks. Gogolorogran senses a ton of wakfu coming from you. He wants to know who you are and where you're from. Speak, mortal. Come on, Grugel. Let's not rush this new incarnate. You're a new Eniripsa, correct? The first steps are tough for a fresh incarnate. Take some time to get used to your new body. Once you regain your abilities, visit Grogalorogran. He'll be waiting for you in the sanctuary to the west. He'll be waiting for you in the sanctuary to the west. How about you explore this area a bit first? And we have officially completed that quest, you guys. The tutorial is done. I'm going to read this stuff, and then, uh, yeah, we can move on. Before setting off on your adventure, take the time to explore the celestial island and get to know its inhabitants. Discover and view guides using the shortcut Shift plus T. You can open the app with the M key. Quests are missions that involve completing certain objectives. They may be unlocked by speaking to an NPC or non-playable character, or automatically by leveling up or discovering a new island, for example. Access your quest with the quest book by with the quest book button or the shortcut Q. Quests are organized by category. When you unlock a quest, you can decide whether you want to track it using the button with an eye on it. The quests you're tracking appear in the quest tracker. Objectives are shown in green. The compass can sometimes be enabled. It shows what direction you should go to to reach an objective. Completing quests gives experience and exclusive rewards. So when it's talking about the, com the, the compass can sometimes be enabled, you have to be in the area where that quest is for the compass to work. So if it's like, oh, find this particular character, and that particular character is not on the Celestial Island of Re, where I am right now, 
the compass isn't going to work. I would need to go to that area, that, um, to that area, the area where the quest is sending me before the compass will work to tell, to get me specifically to where I need to be or who I need to talk to and all that fun stuff. So we press Q. Hold on, let me read this first. Celestial Island of, Celestial Island of Re, the Celestial Island known as Re offers various learning opportunities. Feel free to explore the area a bit before going to meet Grogalora Grant. And we need to talk to Huli, talk to Automai, talk to Irina, talk to Kepralia, wandering around Re, which is this character right here, and complete the quest facing a boss, which is, once we do everything else, this will take us to where Grogalora Grand just ran off to. So we're going to talk to her real quick because she's right here. And she's a pain in the butt to keep track of because she moves around unlike all the other characters. At least on Re. You notice the silhouette of a Sadita get, um, ghost of, which seems incredibly serene and benevolent to you. Welcome to Re, Nikiwadi. I hope you had a pleasant journey. Let me introduce myself. I'm Keparalia, and I assist the residents in regulating the island's flora and fauna. I can answer any of your questions related to the ecosystem. Hello and thank you, Keparalia. Life seems so peaceful, Henri. Looks like you're doing a great job. I appreciate the harmony of the forces around us. That's why I place so much importance on a balanced ecosystem. Every one of our actions has an impact on the world, and believe me, it's not trivial. So learning to maintain this balance is essential. I understand. I'll try to help you. So this is going to tell us about regulating fauna. Each of your actions impacts the ecosystem of an area. If you kill a monster, it won't respawn automatically. So to manage the monster population, you have to replant seeds. Harvesting seeds is done like any other profession action, directly on monsters. This is the main purpose of the trapper profession. Use the seed directly on the ground in the monster family's area. This will transform it into a monster group. So when it's talking about uh, professions, it's talking about all of these. These are all the professions that you can potentially have. And since I've already played this game, as you can probably see, I'm going to start it by level. I have some pretty higher level professions already, but trapper is when you get pieces um, off of, or resources, materials, what have you, off of critters that you've killed. So Keparalia is giving you a few missions, missions to manage the Celestial Island ecosystem. When a monster dies, it disappears forever. As with trees cut down or plants harvested, it's up to you to replant what you consume in the ecosystem or else disrupt it. Harvest three woden seeds, kill three woden and plant three woden seeds. So we're about to see what the trapper profession does by completing principles of the ecosystem monsters. So hover over the woden, right click, extract seed. That is how we harvest three wilderness seeds, and we've got to do it to three of these little guys, so that's one, this is two, this is three. And we know we've successfully done so, because down here where the spell bar normally is, we have our wilderness seeds. So, fun fact, if you go and press this top button, it says change world slash combat mode. So, world mode is going to have, like, Things that you can interact with, like the seeds that you get. If I were to pick flowers, the flower seeds would go here as well and all that fun stuff. I'll show, um, we'll see more of that in a minute. But if I click on this, it shows our spells. So when we're not in combat, we can still see some of this information. And if you right click on it, now let me do it. No. Ah, there we go. Yes, it does. So our spells, if you right click on it, it'll show you these boxes that give us more information about the spell. So the heal explosion inflicts fire damage on enemies in an area of effect, places a status mark 
it rips and deals fire damage around the target when the target is KO'd. Uh, statistic mark, damage three, and two uses per turn. So effect is damage three, level four, status mark, and then it goes up one whenever you do a critical hit. That's what that means. And then if we right, if we hover over say this mark or just right click on it, so it won't go away. We can see that the say this marks effect is minus 20% block. When the bear dies, it inflicts four, per, uh, four damage. And then under critical, it looks like it does the same no matter what. So that's cool. You can get that out of the way. The next one is the invigoration spell that the Anaripsa has, it heals the targeted ally and gives a small dodge gain. The spell has a long range. So, heals four, one dodge, it'll do two damage to an enemy. So the green shows ally, red is an enemy. Under critical, looks like one point more. Uses per target, that's pretty cool. All right, and then with anatomy, that uh, inflicts air damage. This damage is greater if the target has high health points. If the target has more than 80% of max HP, damage is five, otherwise, the damage is three. In critical, the damage is seven, otherwise, the damage is four. Two uses per turn. So, hopefully, you guys are getting the point here. Um, this shows, the star shows the action point. This shows our, um, the range, like how many squares. So minimum one, maximum four. It's a modifiable range. And the, um, it's a single target spell. So only one square, basically, is what that means. And modifiable range, I'm, I don't remember what that means. I have to look it up to be honest. Fix this map. All right. So now we got to kill three wardens. No, I'm not fighting five of y'all. Are you crazy? You're at level eight. Interesting. We're getting a little sidetracked here because this celestial gobble is something that we need to fight. To be able to get one of the emotes and emotes are these cute little things right here Ta -da! boom i can dab do i have them all already oh, i have them all that's cool I'm going to try and find it. If no one else seems interested. Ellie. Dang. No, this is not good. I get fucked up. Mm -mm, we don't like that. Did I just waste? I did. That sucks. Oh, he's gonna kill me before I kill him. Oh, I did it again. 
again. My depth perception is not very good. I need to pay attention to the little circle underneath it. <laughs> um, hint. That's also how you can tell which way the character is facing if they are a little, if it's obscured or if you can't really tell where their face is. So we're not going to do that a second time. He's like, yeah, bitch, you're too dumb. I'm going to keep going to this stupid square. I need you to leave me alone. him with this from the beginning. <clears throat> Maybe I wouldn't be struggling so much. I can hit you from afar too. Well, not, not, not from there, though. I need you to, like, be poisoned. Trouble, you guys. And I can't hit myself. That sucks. That's stupid. To be a healer that can't heal yourself? I mean, I know what happens, but jeez. It does happen to the best of us. You didn't be my friend, Celestial Bobble. How the fuck? I mean, there's definitely no winning now. See what it looks like when you lose. <laughs> For educational purposes, I'm showing you. Yeah, that's 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 what we're gonna go with. Uh, Celestial Island of Ring. No, because I already started to find. Uh, 
uh, probably. Although I don't know for sure, to be completely honest. <laughs> I'm gonna arrive right back here at Reed. All right, so we harvested three Woden. <laughs> I just need a group of three. Level one. Oh, maybe I shouldn't attack. I mean, if you would come here, that would help me greatly. So I can get through some of this quest stuff more quickly. If not, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Slash Island of Rain. Mm hmm. To complete this quest, I kill three voted. You're done. And that's what the victory screen looks like. <laughs> okay. So, Automize right here. I'm going to go ahead and talk to him. That's going to get this off the list. Automize seems especially cheerful at the sight of you. You're back. So, how's it going exploring the, Celest the Celestial Island? Are you up for the next part? So far, so good. We'll see if I'm ready to move on to the next world. Who are you, anyway? Ha ha ha. That's right. I haven't introduced myself. Sorry. I'm Automai, science from agent alchemist. Don't be fooled by my appearance. I'm several centuries old, though I've spent the majority of my time studying various life forms. You don't say. Anyway, thanks for helping out. Good. I can help you about some of the basic concepts that govern this place, if you like. Otherwise... I would urge you to chat with others on the island as they all have important information to share and things for you to do. All right, I'm going to scope out the island. And he basically just talks about like wakfu and stasis, which are um, opposing elements in the world of wakfu and things that you want to help keep uh, in balance in this game. I think I see my handsome hubby. Yeah, it's me. It's me, Jessica. <laughs> that look cute. I'm a little fairy. I'm a cute little fairy. So. I'm going to go talk to Huli, and then will you help me kill some, some rodents and stuff? Thank you. Can you make me the party leader, Porfa, please? Oops, where am I going? I was going the wrong way. No, oh, I went to go talk to Huli real quick. Uh, where you go to change your class? 
some kind of any rip so ghost addresses you excitedly. Hey there, I haven't seen you around here before. Are you a newly reincarnated any rip so? I'm Huli, by the way. Nice to meet you, Huli. Yes, that's right. I only just reincarnated. It's kind of confusing. I don't totally understand what's happening to me. Hmm, the reincarnation process can be complicated. Even though I've spent plenty of time here, I'm not confident about it myself. It makes sense that you feel a bit lost. Should I start over from the beginning? I wouldn't mind a refresher. A soul never dies, even when separated from its physical shell. When our soul leaves their vessels, they are drawn to a huge dream of wakfu that flows in incarnum, and then they reincarnate. We lose the memories of our previous life in that moment, whether you were a king or a baker in your previous life. You start over from the same point once in Incarna. That's amazing, but then what are you? Alas, my ghost of form hides a tortured soul that never managed to incarnate. That's why I'm dedicated to guiding souls as they seek incarnation. I want them to get the best advice for the rest of their adventure. Then where are we? We're on the celestial island of Re. This island is located between Incarna, where you came from, and the world of Twelve. You'll find other souls to converse with and other incarnates like yourself. Other incarnates? I'm not the only one who's fallen before? Huli chuckles quietly. Yes, new souls do fall here, although it's pretty rare. There must be something special about you. Most people use this place to train in Arena's Dojo, which you'll find to the east. Some even decide to stay here instead of adventuring. That explains it. Wait, did you say I was a new any Ripsa earlier? Each soul can choose whatever class they want. It's a matter of choosing what GD they want to be a disciple of. You previously chose to be an actual any rib so that choice isn't permanent. As for me, I can change your class for free up to level 30. Just come see me if you feel like doing so. Thanks for your help, Huli. I'll check out the rest of the island and come back if I need to. Yeah, because I definitely am fine being in any rib so. All right. Do, do, do. Oh, sure. Huh? Yeah, there's, uh, over here, the ill-educated safe. It has, an e it has an emote here that you can get. So it says, for me, I've already learned it, so I don't remember which one it is. Which one is it? Oh, you're pointing? So if I go to email here, this is the one. Ta-da! Okay. So can we fight some rabbits? Over here. There was a big group of them that I was like, ooh, let's do that, because it'll be one battle, but I'll probably get a bunch of HP, or not HP, XP. You ready? Okay. Oh, where are you? Here we go. Oh, yeah, I'm just standing here because you're close. Yes, I'm pretty good at that. Got some guild bonuses and stuff. Level 76. And this character is a rogue. Played by my husband. Female characters, because in his own words, female characters look cooler. Well, we have some new moves here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Oh, I can't. Wait a minute. Ta -da. Okay. Oh, I found a healing spell. I need to read. Ooh. If 
you want to, yeah. I mean, you don't have to. I just figured if you were here and I picked a fight with a bunch of Wildens, I wouldn't be in too much trouble. I wouldn't be like, oh, you died before you could even... Hey! Can you leave that? Uh, oh, never mind. You already did. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm just going to finish these, uh, the principles of the ecosystem monsters, plant three wodent seeds. So one, two, Come back closer to you. Three. I gotta find Caparelia. There she is. I took care of the Bodens. I see you know how to deal with Fauna. Let's move on to Flora. It's as good as done. So each of your actions impact the ecosystem of an area. If you cut a resource, it won't respawn automatically. So to, re to regulate the flora in a zone, you have to replant seeds and cuttings. Harvesting seeds is done like any other profession action directly on the resource. This action becomes available when the resource is at an advanced stage of evolution and the action returns it to the previous stage, allowing you to cut the resource and harvest it. So uh, for the principles of the ecosystem resources, uh, Caparelia has given you a few missions to manage the celestial island ecosystem. When a monster dies, it disappears forever. As with trees cut down or plants harvested, it's up to you to replant what you consume in the ecosystem or else disrupt it. We're going to harvest three celestial flower seeds, cut three celestial flowers, and then plant three. So, ta -da. we have three to plant. One, two, three. And these are babies. Little babies. So I can actually harvest three here to get the seeds. And then I can cut these guys down. Now we gotta find Caparelia. Come here, girl. Let me tell you something. This is for the flowers. All right, then. When you take care of the ecosystem, it returns the favor. Now you can use the resources you've harvested to craft potions at Anamai's workshop. Potions, I'm going to see. So, to finish principles of the ecosystem crafting, we gotta go here to the crafting station. You can see, or maybe you can't. But... There is a workshop here, and it looks like a little potions jar next to Automai. Caparelia is giving you a few missions to manage the Celestial Island ecosystem. When a monster dies, it disappears forever. We've already read that, and so we're just going to go on to the crafting station, which is like the one from earlier. We're going to click on the item, the regeneration vial. It's going to check mark next to it, indicating that we have all the resources needed. And we're just going to craft it. Boom. This wants us to craft three. So we can go here, click on where it says uh, how many we want. We can click two, or we can press maximum either way. And then it'll keep going for us instead of us having to click each time. So the next tutorial is going to have to do with decorations. We need to talk to Arena and then we can face the boss. Talking to Arena is going to be a long, tedious process because it's basically just teaching all the things that you can do in battle. Well, not all the things, some of the basics. There's a lot of stuff that you kind of learn as you go. And the more you play, the more this stuff makes sense. 
I'm not sure to be honest. You could probably buy some in the market though. <laughs> the sacrier who seems to be the dojo master stares at you. The silence previously interrupted by the disciples' katas is broken after a few moments. Welcome to my dojo, young incarnate. I teach the basics of combat to beginners like you. Interested? I'm interested. I'm a bit rusty, so reviewing the basics would be good. Perfect. I offer a few beginner level courses. Let's see what you can do. Actually, I'll come back later. But yeah, this is just the... In the Celestial Dojo Arena is offering a refresher on basic combat skills. Complete all the beginner's tests for gradu uh, to graduate from her school. Complete the test on positioning, elements, combat, distance, line of sight, area of effect, movement effects, and states. Hmm. So we're going to start with the first one. All right. So when it comes to orientation, which way the fighters are facing has an effect on damage inflicted and received. A target attack from the side will take 10% extra damage, while a target attack from behind will take 25% extra damage. So I don't know if you remember me mentioning earlier that where you hit it matters. Use the arrow below the HP bar to change which way you're facing before skipping a turn. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard. In this exercise, you must hit the Mr. Punchy in the right area of effect to deal maximum damage. Keyword, maximum. So we want to hit him from behind. Now, something that took me a minute to get used to is whenever you go to begin a battle, you set wherever you want to be, and then you would have to hit the two swords here. The battle automatically started for us, though. And down here we have uh, less than 60 seconds to complete the task, which is to move... behind Mr. Punchy. So we're going to skip our turn. Mr. Punchy does not attack ever. He is literally just a dummy and is being used to teach us all these principles of combat, right? So damage is increased when attacking from the side and even more so from the back. And it says over here, hit me in the correct area to complete the exercise. So we're just going to hit him here. From behind, boom. Mission accomplished. Ta -da! Next, I want to learn more about elements. Spells are categorized into one of four elements fire, water, earth, or air. Some effects, such as damage, are based on the spell's element. Elemental Masteries provide a boost to damage dealt in their respective elements. Conversely, Resistance reduce damage taken in the corresponding elements. A fighter's Elemental Masteries and Resistance appear on their character sheet. So, I had pointed this out earlier. In this exercise, you must hit the Mr. Punchy in the right element each turn. Use the shortcut Shift V to show a tooltip about its resistance, or right click on it to open its fighter sheet. So, again, we want to, if you're ready to start the fight, you would hit these two swords or press the space bar. I'm going to go ahead and hit the swords. It's important to pay attention to the opponent's elemental resistances. Hit me in the right elements to complete the exercise. And if this leaves the screen before you get a chance to finish reading it, you can just look at the chat. Make sure you have the uh, vicinity, the white vicinity one. See how it uh, disappears? You may not, but it does disappear if you unclick the white vicinity square. So we leave it on and we can see Mr. Punchy's text here. And before I run out of time, we have 0% shielding for Earth, so that's what we want to hit him with. And then we're going to end our turn. 
we can uh, notice note here that uh, now the zero percent has moved it's now air that he's weak to so we want to take the air attack and hit Mr. Punchy with that zero percent earth this is water by the way earth air fire blue for water green for earth purple for air red for fire I'm going to go ahead and finish this turn so we can get the next set of stats. He's weak to fire this time. That's what we're going to hit him with. Boom. I want to learn about melee and distance. This has to do with how close to your target you are. A target is at a distance or ranged if located three or more cells from the caster. The target is in melee range if located two or fewer cells from the caster. In this exercise, you must alternate between ranged and melee attacks to deal damage to the Mr. Punchy. So all we're gonna do is start the fight, and then we wanna stand in the green space. So we can attack him from here. And then see how this space turned red? If not, the space turned red. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to move into the green space and we can attack him from here and fulfill the uh, distance because it would take one, two, three spaces to get to the same space he's on. That's how far away he is. And something I mentioned earlier that we can now see is the shortcuts when you hover over the neutral damage there's now a window it shows one so if i press one mr punchy's now lit up and all i have to do is move my mouse i can go here press one and now we can see the spell symbol whoops not fast enough that's okay if Mr. Punchy doesn't attack. We're just going to go back and forth. Boom. So, whenever you select the correct number spell, the it will the the symbol for that spell will appear next to your mouse. So you know what spell it is that is selected. Now, this one is line of sight it's a difficult one, at least it was for me at first, because you would think that as long as there's nothing directly in your, uh, between your character and the target, that it would be in your line of sight. But that's not how it works. So for this one, I learned very quickly that the best way to get through it, because you are timed, is to just try and get as close to a corner as possible. And um, if when you get to that corner, as your character is moving to the corner, hover over Mr. Punchy because it'll show you if Mr. Punchy is um, able to be hit. And you'll know if he's able to be hit because the square he's on will be lit up blue, meaning that he's in your line of sight. So here we go. I'm going to click on this having explained that because I'm going to be moving around. Uh, line of sight determines whether you have an obstructed view of a target. If there is an obstacle between you and the target, you don't have line of sight, then you can't perform any actions on this target. Some spells don't require line of sight. In this exercise, you must find a line of sight to reach the Mr. Punchy. Each time you hit it, an obstacle change position uh, the obstacles change position. Blah, 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 blah. Rewind. Each time you hit it, the obstacles change position, and you need to find another line of sight. So, very frustrating when you're new. So, hence the tutorials. <laughs> There's a lot I wish somebody would have taught me, and I know everybody doesn't know somebody who plays the game, hence the video. Here we go. 
So again, I mentioned corners. We press once, not lit up blue. We're gonna go to this other corner here. Mr. Punchy's lit up blue, I'm gonna go ahead and hit him. Now we have not lit up blue. We're gonna go towards this corner a little bit. I can hit him. We're gonna go towards this corner, I can hit him. And I'm doing, I'm clicking this so fast because I'm pressing the number one for the shortcut of the only spell I have and then clicking on Mr. Punchy. Boom, we're done. That quick. Next is area of effect. Mm -hmm. And this has to do with the fact that some effects are triggered on multiple cells at once, which is the area of effect. As you select from available cells when casting a spell, the area of effect is shown in red. A spell's area of effect is indicated in the spell description. So blue shows your line of sight where your spell can go. Red shows where your spell will go. And in this exercise, you must, you must hit all the Mr. Punchies at once to deal damage to them. To do this, select the appropriate spell and cast it on the right cell. All right, here we go. This one, we have one spell, right? Shortcut one on the bottom right under well-placed cross, you can see shortcut two and a well-placed ring uh, has shortcut three indicated. And I'm reading out loud in case you can't see. I need to stop saying that. I'm not sure what else to say, <laughs> to be honest. But anyway, so these guys moved. I can still hit them with spell one. Can still hit with spell one. Spell one isn't going to get all these guys, right? But spell two will. So I'm going to use that one. And if it looks crazy, spell three was like a circle. So you would use that if you're like, oh my God, these guys are like nowhere near each other or in any kind of like recognizable pattern, then use spell three, which would have done a circle. Um, complete the test on movement effects. Actually, let's do the area of effect one again, because I want to show you guys what I mean by the circle. Yeah, 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 we, we know. So I could use spell one or spell two to get all the punchy. Spell three is this one, right? Obviously can't use that. Now see how this is a little bit crazy and you're like, oh my God, I can't use the, yes, you can. You can use spell three and they're all going to get hit. Spell three again, just gotta do it right. Yep, all of them are gonna get hit. Boom. Now we're gonna go on to movement effects. Other fighters can be moved using certain effects such as pushback attraction or teleportation. For example, a two cell pushback moves the caster's target two cells away. In this exercise, use the movement tools at your disposal to place the Mr. Punchy on the green glyph so it'll take damage. The glyphs change position each time it's activated. All right, so it's not going to show us yet, I don't think. Yeah, no. But I'll try and run through what you can do as quickly as possible because this is timed. Here... Shortcut one is attraction, so to bring things towards you. Shortcut two is to push things away from you or push back. Shortcut three basically lets you teleport to whichever square you select. And put, uh, shortcut four is a transposition, so it lets you switch character, uh, switch spaces rather, with Mr. Punchy. So what we're going to do first is um, 
jump, which is shortcut three. We're gonna go here, and then we can just push Mr. Punchy with shortcut two. Then we're going to, let me see if I can, we're gonna click on jump, right? I'm gonna get behind him. And we're gonna go to the next turn since we ran out of points here. But yeah, now we're gonna push him. And then if I jump over here in front of him instead of behind him and press attraction, it's gonna pull him towards me. We're gonna change spaces. So now I'm gonna jump to where I want Mr. Punchy here. And this is where transposition comes in handy because then I can just switch places with him. Boom, he's where I want him. I can stand here and my turn. So my, uh, you know, AP and walkthrough points and all that stuff reset. Now we're just gonna push him. All right, so I'm gonna go here and my turn. And I'm not using shortcuts because I want you guys to be able to actually see what I'm doing. Oh, I forgot I need to jump. I can't move. I can't just move to the squares. At least not for that particular tutorial. All right, so now we're going to complete the state, and we'll be done. So, fighters may be affected by states. These are effects of varying duration. Your character states appear at the top of the screen. You can view another fighter state's other character sheet. In this exercise, the active state on the Mr. Punchy tells you what you need to do. And that's going to be down towards the bottom of the character sheet. Check the Mr. Punchy states on its fighter sheet. Right click on the dummy to open it and look through its states. Let's, uh, I was trying to see if I could remember what that particular state meant, but I don't. I don't remember. So we're going to right click on Mr. Punchy. It shows us down to the bottom, faint hearted. To inflict, da to inflict damage on Mr. Punchy, you must end your turn six cells or more away from him. So that's easy enough. I'm just going to go to a corner. We don't have to attack him. We just end our turn. And that attacks him. So to inflict damage on Mr. Punchy, you must end your turn adjacent to him. That means next to him. I don't know why they don't just say that. And turn. Boom. Done. Here, to inflict damage on Mr. Punchy, you must attack him from a red cell. And then the attack, neutral damage. Repeat him. To inflict damage on Mr. Punchy, you must attack him from a green cell. Go here, because why not? And as a friendly reminder, instead of clicking here on the spell bar, you can use the shortcut. This spell is shortcut one, so all I got to do is press the one button. I don't have to hold it or anything. Once I've pressed the button, it's that spell is selected. The symbol is next to the mouse, and I can just hit Mr. Punchy. And we're done. Spells and passives. You've unlocked a new passive slot. Go to your spells interface. You can go there directly by pressing S. So we'll, we'll do that later. Right now, all that we have left is facing the boss, talking to Gorgalora Grant. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the spell since it came up, and uh, yeah. This is your spells. You can use the S shortcut or click on this little wand looking thing. And this is showing all of your spells, or all of my spells rather. So this water spell does heals five, does four damage. This one heals seven and does six damage. So we're gonna we're gonna replace it because we want one of each type of spell, right? So 
This one heal. This one does six damage. This one does no damage. It just heals. This one does ten damage. We like that. We like that a lot. What does this do? Cast on KO'd. We can revive. Cool, 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 cool. Six damage. Wait. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. You can go when you're not in combat and other than on your spell bar, you can go to your spell page and see all the same information with regard to what cool things you can do with that spell. Like this one, for example, Guardian Fire heals an ally and applies a mark to the ally. If the ally loses HP and falls below 50% of their max HP, they're healed by the Aniripsa a second time. And this is called a trademark. And the trademark looks like it says, does not block lines of sight when HP falls below 50%. And you can use it to deal 20% damage or heal 20, 9 damage. And it's a fire heal? So in critical, it's 12. Goes from 10 to 12. Trademark is something else. And then conditions for the guardian fire is 2 uses per turn. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, characteristics. This shows um, the uh, level that you're at, your character's name. If you selected a nation, that flag would be here. And it shows like your character sheet when you're not in battle, right? There's on the bottom left an arrow you can press that will show specifics. Damage inflicted, critical hit, initiative, dodge, wisdom, control, kinds of a stuff. You're shielding what you're weakest to, against, what, um, you know, your strongest against, or your resistance is, right? And then over here, towards the top, HP, A, A, P, M, P, and W, P. Where it says level, you would be able to change to different uh, builds, and builds are something that will be... Expanded upon later. Right now, we really can't do anything, so there's no point in explaining what I can't show. Off to entering the Celestial Sanctuary we go. And for the record, this is going to uh, trigger, trigger a fight. A fight that... Uh, you are not intended to win, and you may be thinking, yeah, well, I'm going to win. No, no, you're not. <laughs> There's no way. You are meant to lose this battle. Um, oh, I'm going to go ahead and read these frescoes here, because they're cool looking, and they explain some things. One day, the world of Twelve was shaken by an ogre. He got it into his head that he had to find the Dofus. And when an ogre makes his mind up about something, he doesn't change it. No matter what the consequences, he waded through dust, sweat, and suffering until he got his hands on the Dofus. His name was Ogrist. Soon he was feared by everyone. His reputation as a warrior preceded him everywhere he went. One fateful day, he succeeded in reuniting the six Dofus. And uh, the six Dofus are dragon eggs. Who would have thought that Ogris the Terrible would have accomplished such an awful feat in the name of love? All the time his fists were beating to get to the Dofus, his heart was beating only for Dathora. Dathora, one of the ten dolls created by Sedita to seduce the elemental dragons at the dawn of time. Ogris brought her back to life, and the beautiful doll fell in love with him. 
Nobody knows what really happened, but the legends say that when Dathura fell into the abyss, Ogre's heart was broken. His tears of sorrow and rage, magnified by the immense power of the six Dofus, created a terrible flood which left the world of twelve underwater. Dito, poor guy. Poor Dathura, too. Ogre's tears, Ogre's tears fell throughout the world. The sea levels rose, and cities which, which were once the pride of the world of twelve were now lost beneath the waves forever. Today, island clusters have emerged to form archipelagos, once more populated by the disciples of the twelve. The gods, powerless against the flood, were not able to prevent the destruction of the world of twelve. Surveying what was left of their world, they decided to give each of its inhabitants a gift. The god Enutroph created the Haven Bag, a magical bag of limitless size. The inside of a Haven Bag is so big, many people have decided to set up home in them. This bag will facilitate trade and commerce and will allow you to regain lost, prosper lost prosperity, said the god Enutroph. The god Osamodas helped by his three dragons, populated the world with creatures of fur, feather, and scales. Animals to graze the grass, fly in the sky, and swim in the sea, said Osamodas, and the disciples of the twelve will look after them. If this world is to prosper, it will not be to the detriment of my creatures. The god Sadida came forward. If we're to strive for prosperity, we, must, we will need abundance. Offer my trees, my flowers, and my seeds. And Sadida sang, but underneath his mask he was frowning. He was thinking of his sons, the trees. In the past, the trees had suffered at the hands of overzealous lumberjacks, and these lumberjacks had cut the trees down faster than Sadida could make them grow. Then the balance with nature had been broken. The disciples of the Twelve had been given another chance. Were they going to take it? The goddess Pandawa protected the taverns and the god Yap protected the forges. As for the goddess Kra, the god Ikaflip, the goddess Eniripsta, the goddess Sacrier, or Sacrier, the god Sram, and the god Zeller, they also gave their gifts, and certain disciples, those most highly regarded by their gods, were elected. They were to be messengers who kept track of whether nature's balance was being maintained or broken. On each of the world's islands, they grouped together in clans. We call them the clan members. Next. Wakfu is an energy that flows through the universes. It comes from the confines of, well, of somewhere. Here, there, we don't really know. The gods and the demons see the Wakfu dancing in the universe. All nature vibrates thanks to Wakfu from the highest mountaintops to the bottom of the seas. Everything is Wakfu. I didn't miss one, did I? No. It is said that some people can even master it, that it has been done in the past. Master Wakfu, truth or legend, nobody knows anymore. All right, that's enough of that. Time to fight Grogalorogran. Grogalorogran. Grogalorogran glares at you coldly. You're back, any ribs up. Grogalorogran's been expecting you. I'm back, and I've regained all my powers. I think it's time for me to go take on the strongest monsters in the cosmos. Grogalorogran senses you are unprepared. You'll need a lot more experience before you can be considered a seasoned adventurer. Seems you're jealous of my inor inordinate power. I'll have to show you what I'm made of. That's very presumptuous of you, Inaripsa. On guard! I'll be waiting. Alright. Show Glogolorogram what you're made of. What you're really made of. Okay. Oh, we can't move. We're stuck. We have three movement points. Whenever any square you select is red, it means that the target, in this case, an enemy. 
dun 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 has you locked in not good enough mortal see he didn't even do nothing he's like yeah you can go ahead and have another turn because I'm gonna kick your ass so we're just gonna we can move now but it's not gonna make much of a difference That's gonna move him, but that's it. You've made Grogalora Grand angry in Eripsa. All right, so he very much kicked my ass. If we go here, we can see what everybody said. The fight is over. Click here to open the end of fight scene. That just opens this bar here. That was sheer luck. Don't go thinking I was giving my all. I let you in. That's enough, new incarnate. Your powers haven't reached their full potential, to be honest. You're a long way off. How so? Glogoloragland can sense. Can see that you're pure of heart. Nevertheless, you must leave this island and go explore the place they call the World of Twelve. The World of Twelve? Get going, new incar incarnate. Glogoloragland must return home to oversee certain matters. What an odd creature. I wonder if we'll ever meet again. So, always look at the chat for any text and whatnot that you may have missed on the screen. Just pro tip, I guess. And here you can set your characteristics. So to open this characteristic screen, you would go to your personal information by pressing P. Going to display abilities and boom, characteristic sheet. This will be glowing whenever you have new points to distribute. And you would just select each of these different sections. The first being intelligent, then strength, then agility, fortune, and lastly, major. And with the different amount of points you have, you would decide in which of the different sections you want it. You can hover over each area, each like little tab here to uh, see what adding a point would do. So this says here that adding to elemental mastery is a bonus to damages in all elements. Right now there's zero elemental mastery, but the next level, if I add one point, would give me five elemental mastery. So when I add one, it's gonna show that my current level is five and that the next level is 10. But it's not going to save until I hit this check mark here to confirm where I want these points distributed. So keep in mind that up until you get to level 30, whatever you set is going to stay that way. Once you get to level 30, you end up being able to reset your characteristics. But then any time after that, you essentially have to pay in some way, shape, or form to be able to, to reset your characteristics. So just keep that in mind moving forward. And um, I have officially finished all of the Celestial Islander requests, but there are still some things we can do while we're here before we go to Astra. 
and that's finding chests, right? So that chest that we saw earlier or that we found earlier had the pointing emoji. There is another chest here. And it's hiding behind this staircase. To get to this staircase, if you're not sure, just go to the zap. Head straight from the zap. Then take a right, your character's right. And this first step has like a little foggy area next to it. And you want to go to the corner until your mouse shows something. I know there's something here. There we go. See? Well, in case you can't see, you have to go all the way back until your mouse allows you to click on something that shows sleepers safe. So you're going to right click, open that. And you would end up getting another emote here, but I already have it. So, hold on a second. Love, have you gotten this, this emote, this other one? There were two chests hidden in the clouds on the Celestial Island of Re. Did you find both of them? If you want to, um, come on down and I'll show you where it is. And then you can tell, you can tell the class, share with the class what emoji it is. Or not emoji, emote. Y'all know what I mean. Yeah, just go directly behind me. Keep going all the way back until it lets you select sleeper safe were you able to find it hmm? whenever you get close enough to it it's going to show like a little circle around you so you, until that happens oh I think you got it it looks like you got it anyway I don't know if you did Nice. What emoji was it? Or emote? Does it show a new one on your bar? Because if not, that means you probably already had it, like you said. You don't remember the question mark? You have a question mark thingy. I don't think I have that one. <laughs> what? For an angry one? <laughs> Jeez. So facing a boss gives us the scared emoji. You get the sit one automatically. Sleeper safe is the yawn. That's the emoji we got. And then when we finish the Celestial Island of Request, we get the take a nap emoji. And we get the bow emoji when we complete the Principles of Combat quest. Nice, nice, nice. The only other quest, the only other emojis that you get from the Celestial Island of Re that we do not have, well, that I do have, yep, I do have, but I hasn't shown on here yet, would be the laugh and uh, to get this laugh emoji you have to complete the belligerent incarnate quest and that requires that you defeat the celestial gobble and Darth Wodent. To defeat the celestial gobble you have to plant 
over 140 flowers. Whenever there's over 140 flowers on the Celestial Island of Re, the Celestial Gobble will spawn in this area that we saw earlier to the east of the Celestial Island of Re. So when we open the map right, right here on the east side and where my uh, husband is, that is where Darth Wodent appears and he appears whenever there are less than 40 Less than 30, excuse me, flowers on the Celestial Island of Re. So right now, there's 57. If we cut down 20-something flowers, Darth Wodent will spawn in this area. Are they planting more than three, or are they... They look like they're relatively new, so... They may just be planting their their three to complete the quest and move on to the next thing. I'm just cutting down all the flowers I can. Oh, pro tip. Whenever you want to, you have two interacting things. Like I want to harvest these flowers, but I can't because the rodent's in the way. If there's arrows at the bottom, you just click on the arrow and it gives you the other option. Which in this case is to chop down some flowers. Are we? No. Okay, well, I'm gonna cut down some more. Yep, less than 30. So, um, it could take 10 minutes before it spawns, my understanding. I'm going to start heading your way in a minute. I'm coming, friend. You handsome, handsome man. I don't know who gave you that idea. Because it sure wasn't me. No, it's not. I didn't do nothing to you. Ah! More teachable moments. So up here on the right, we can see that around this little stamp area, we have Automai's picture, because he's the clan member. If we click on the eye, it gives us all his information and for this area right now there's plus two health points clan member bonus and then there's an area bonus here it looks like you can click on it to keep it up bonus is granted across the region for having fulfilled all the clan members wishes 60 wisdom 60 prospecting 30 percent planting xp 30% harvesting XP.
this would normally show the weather, but we're on, we're literally in a version of the afterlife. So no weather. It's perfect. It's perfect. Exactly. So for the ecosystem, you would click on the uh, icon that looks like it's got a flower and a monster on it. And it will show the how many flowers there are, how many crops there are, how many trees there are, and how many monsters there are. And on the bottom, when there's a star, that shows you the range that the clan member wants. So for the Celestial Island of Re, Atomai wants us to keep the amount of votants between 20 and 80. So we're just going to wait for Darth Wodent to appear, and then we will fight him. I'm going to go back over here. Just checking to make sure homeboy isn't like... Or homegirl, is it? Or home friend, person, I don't know. Doesn't plant more flowers. Do, 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 do. They're standing waiting, so they may end up jumping in with us on the whole Darth Wodent situation. Yes, you do. It's right there next to you. It's in front of you. Yes, it is. Your pet's literally right behind you. I can see the little blue gambling. Oh, I just see the blue The little blue gambling? Oh. Oh, it must be there in place of your pet. There he is. Hold on. I'm just putting the call out in case somebody else wants to jump in on this action. Because I cannot do it by myself. I'm just going to stay following him until <laughs> we'll see what happens. I don't think anyone else is here, to be honest. Okay. I don't see anyone heading this way. I'm just going to wait and let the timer run out. That way, if anybody... No, they don't. They can jump in on the fight as long as they're still in the placement phase. Oh, on the right hand side of the screen. Yep. The circle that with the number that's changing turns zero. 
11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, I don't know. Probably, I'm probably not staying up all night. I uh, probably can't because I'm only a level 12. A level 11, not even a level 12. Rude. Well, I mean... Oh, that's not gonna do nothing. Let me just face the right way. I'm not gonna show you my back. Oh, I can kill him. For the emojis. Do you have the laugh emoji? Oh, well, you need it. Did you get the laughing emoji? I'm running back towards where the celestial gobble would need to be. Let's start planting flowers. Oh, you only have to do one of the two? I thought you had to do both. Oh no, you're fine. Yeah, you gotta plant like a hundred and something. Mm-hmm. Fine. Thank you. I'm going to go on my haven bag and come back with some more seeds because ain't enough here right now. And I know I have more in my bag. It's just stupid that you can't go in your bag. Henri. Oh. Go to Astrob. Astrob, City of Mercenaries. So... You already have a debt to pay. Take this old haven bag to Pappy Pal so you can pay for the bed and roof you just destroyed during your, during your reincarnation. Life is hard. So it doesn't actually show you this when you do the tutorial, but whenever you crash off of Re, you actually end up landing on Pappy Pal's house. So it shows you getting kicked off Re, but then you have to do all this stuff on Re and then get to Astra when you do the main tutorial. But with future characters, you wouldn't crash land on Re, you would crash land on Pappy Pal's house. 
so it looks like we have to go to Astrup City whenever you take the um, the zap it's going to show Astra Center right and this is where you'll be Astra Center it's gonna take you here and then you would go this way and if you're not 100% sure where you're supposed to go you can always use the compass so this Astra Center Drago Express you want to go ahead and touch it once you do it's gonna open up a map that allows for you to travel anywhere on the map right now because I've had previous characters that I've played all the Drago turkeys in the area are activated I highly recommend any area that you are able to access just taking the time to run through and touching all the travel turkeys <laughs> <laughs> and that will activate them so when you get here this is Pappy Pal but if you have a hard time finding him you can go to the top left that'll show your quests and where it says speak to Pappy Pal you can click on the compass and now it shows an arrow and exactly where you need to go but we don't need that because we made it here just fine. I'm going to click on Pappy Pal and talk to him. Hello, little one. I'm the head of the Mercenaries Guild. What can I do for you? Mammy Pal asked me to bring you your Haven bag. And you're like, wait, what? Remember, normally what would end up happening is uh, you would crash through the house up here and you would end up inside this house. And I'll show you inside the house in a minute. But Mammy Pal asked me to bring you your Haven bag, or I hear you have a little present for me. So, ah, that old thing. I did tell her I didn't want it anymore. Take it if you want. It could be useful. I'll explain to you how to use it. By the way, I've never seen you before. Are you a new incarnate? Yes, I just crashed through your house ceiling and onto your bed. You've got a rather thick skull. I wonder if, well, anyway. You certainly make a great mercenary, but you still need a little training. Would you like me to teach you how to be stronger? What's in it for me? Well done, kid. I like that idea. Start by heading to the mercenaries training room. It's not far from here. One of my young recruits is already practicing there. He's called the Astro Knight. He'll be able to show you the ropes of being a good mercenary. It's agreed then. I'll head to the mercenaries training room. So where you end up... Oh look, another Andy Ripsa. Is there. Hence the crashed, destroyed looking bed. You end up here. Then you go down, and you would talk to Granny, um, not Granny, Mammy Pal. Granny, Mammy, Nana, same difference. So, oh, how beautiful youth is. I really envy you sometimes, but my old bones won't let me adventure anymore. I retired a long time ago. Mammy? What's going on? Where does the Gamlin's name come from? When we got married, Pappy and I had to exchange a gift to symbolize our union. A dowry, if you will. This little gambling is a proof of our love, more or less. But it's much too wild for someone my age. What a funny wedding present. She eventually gives that to you. Um, I've come, I'll come to visit you sometime. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. So, he wants you to go to the mercenary room. Um... And we'll do that stuff later. This tutorial is the display window, so we're going to go ahead and talk to him again. Start by heading to the mercenaries, blah, 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 blah. I hear you have a little present for me. Yes, Mammy found some old junk in the house that they want to take away from me. Here, we made a list. Have a look and tell me if anything catches your eye. I'm going to take this old wooden box. Cool, cool, cool. And then I hear you have a little present for me. This display case still looks in a good state. I'll take it. So whenever you go to check your inventory, you can go to this bag or press I. And that'll show everything you have in your inventory. In my case, I have Any Ripsa's Hands. That's the book that comes with my character. An Incarnum costume that I'm not going to need because I already have it. When I go to... 
up here this is your bag this will show any items you've gotten from quests that you've completed and the star will show any costumes that any of your characters have or that you've purchased so I already have the Incarnum costume I don't want to wear it this Incarnum costume is just gonna take up space so I can delete it we want this celestial bag so I'm gonna put that there put this bag here now we have all the space and I just moved this bag to the front because it would be underneath the main pocket whatever right and yeah so these are all items that I would eventually put in my haven bag now that I actually have my haven bag I can go in it and get more flowers for that quest And where are the flowers? Oh, you know what? I don't have more seeds. My main character has it in her pocket, so I won't be able to. Oh, well, it'll be fine. So we'll just have to do it the quote unquote old fashioned way. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, over 140. I was just thinking that if I got more seeds from my other account, we'd be able to plant more, thus harvest more, and get it through, get through it more quickly. But it doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm just gonna come here. The, pl the flowers grow pretty quick too, so. Oh wow. Looks like our Sadita friend is also planting things. No, I don't think there's they're not an NPC, babe. The only thing I don't like is that like when you're harvesting these flowers, it's it's one flower, one seed. Every time. Yeah. Okay, you let me know whenever you harvest it and get more than one seed at a time without capping at I see that, thank you. Hubby for the win. Oh, it's already here. Celestial Bevel. Come on over. Come on over. Let's see if... I don't know. I think that's they're the only other person here. There's two other people. Forsirker and Lulupop. And neither of them seem interested. Yeah. Okay. Do I have to start the fight? Mm -hmm. Oh. Ta-da! Let's do it! Sure. 
Ta-da! As a reward for your heroic feats, you have one belligerent incarnate. Laugh. Ta-da! We did it! Let me see you laugh. Let me see it. You gotta do the laugh. Hold on. Hold on. What am I doing? Give me just a minute. <laughs> all right. So that's all the stuff for the Celestial Island of Re. I'm going to stop here and we can do the Pappy Pal stuff in the next video. Or not the Pappy Pal stuff, the mercenary training stuff. Bye. Bye.